breakout years last year. Look for the three and four picks, Anthony Parker and Etienne to follow suit. Here's Etienne again, the first down catch. Billy Parker brings him down. But again, one catch in two years. Jade Etienne may be on his way to his first 100 yard game. Uh, Jade Etienne has all the tools, soft hands, big frame. Just needs to get a little bit stronger. And that confidence that Sarah mentioned. Three catches, 80 yards. Pierce looking and now changing the play as the clock ticks down. He gets the snap off and calls the draw to Simpson. Chad Simpson spins off first contact and down at the 15 yard line. Six for Simpson. Looks like Buck Pierce may have had some trouble with the signals from the sidelines. the Bomber fans getting it after seeing Buck Pierce covering his ears in order to hear that transmission from the sideline. So second and four at the Alouette 15-yard line. Pierce holds on and he's going to have to eat the football dropped outside the line of scrimmage. It's that moment when everybody in the stadium holds their breath. And did we see hesitation? We know he would have taken off automatically in the past. Almost like the clamps have been put on him. And he ends up getting dropped for a loss, and the field goal team comes on. Pilardi trying to make it a seven-point game, and he does. They trail by 10 at the half, but now up by a touchdown. Our sack tally again this year brought to you by Purelater. Tackling hunger across Canada. Check, and there were the numbers last year. We salute the Purelater people for the terrific work they do. Absolutely, and of course, Schultz. <laughs> Big supporter quarterbacks getting sacked, which uh, would seem to yeah. con contradict everything Schultz did in his career. <laughs> Lions led last year, but you see Winnipeg and Montreal among the leaders. Tim Burke told us yesterday the sack and sack against category in the CFL. The first S.J. Green, big catch. And S.J. Green has Montreal back inside the 50, and Anthony Calvillo took a hit that he's been shaken up. Shaking that right throwing hand. Well, we've seen Anthony Calvillo take a couple of shots, not necessarily big ones, but getting hit a little bit more than we're used to in this ball game. AC waits this one out for SJ Green to come open deep. Kenny Maynard with the shot on the quarterback. JT Gilmore was shaken up as well on the play. He's getting attention as. Calvillo tries to get a little feeling back in the right hand, but yesterday Tim Burke mentioned that that quarterback sack versus the quarterback sacks you allow, that ratio more important in the Canadian Football League to be good than even in the National Football League. And it's an area that they're looking for improvement. And GT Gilmore, a little woozy as he is helped off. Take a look here, watch the right hand of Anthony Calvillo as he follows through on this throw. Wraps his hand right off the helmet of Kenny Maynard, who is coming in to deliver that hit. 27 yard pickup for SJ Green. London in motion. And they'll swing it out to Green. And he is cut down by Brandon Stewart on the corner. Limits the game to three. Uh, that's perfectly played by Brandon Stewart because he is the only guy out there with a shot to make the play. Jamel Richardson sealed the inside defender. Alex Suber with the block outside in right here. And then it's one-on-one -on -one in space. Brandon Stewart gets it done. Alan Bruce on the move, second and seven. Pressure on again. Calvillo scrambles and he's brought down. 
Kenny Maynard gets to the quarterback and drops Anthony Calveo for the third sack of the game. Well, this is exactly what this team needs from Kenny Maynard in order to be successful. Again, it's strictly a four-man rush from the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. They're dropping everyone else back into coverage. Kenny Maynard working against Jeff Parrott just gets underneath him with that pad level. Track down the QB. 15 sacks in the past two years in limited reps. In fact, Meaner with only six game starts. And now a regular with the departure of Jason Vega. So White forced to punt. Javon Johnson hoping that will bounce into the end zone, and it does. And it's a, it will be a single point. Six-point lead for Winnipeg. Wimbledon 2013 continues. Tomorrow morning, TSN, your home for all the action. You can watch it live on TSN, TSN Mobile TV, and exclusive live bonus coverage on tsn.ca with coverage beginning at 7 a.m. Eastern, 4 a.m. Pacific. So 30 to 24 is the Bomber lead here with just over five and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. Just in terms of the compete factor that the Winnipeg Blue Bombers have shown in this ball game, suggesting that it's a whole new year here in the peg. And a time count violation against the Bombers. Time count violation, Winnipeg, number four. So they'll reset. A little surprising they'd have trouble executing a play after uh, on their first play of the series, but now they're ready to go. First and 15. Pierce. Pumps held on, and now underneath, he's got a catch. Completed to Chad Simpson under the backfield, and Simpson close to the first down. He'll be dropped a yard, yard and a half short. Up at the 43-yard line. Uh, only Buck Pierce knows whether a year ago in this situation, if he would have pulled the ball down and tried to run it upfield. But here you see, look at the eyes. Eyes downfield the whole way, manages to find Chad Simpson. Turns it into a positive play without taking a hit. So marked right at the 43. It'll be second and two. Simpson in behind. Pierce takes the handoff. A little sidestep, and he'll have the first down across the 45. Well, Tim Burke took over the Bombers midway through last season. He kept his job and he kept much of this team intact. The only significant addition being free agent safety Koshi Mwamba replacing the veteran Ian Logan. A few other veterans departing along the way, but a team that largely chose to stand pat in the offseason despite missing the playoffs. And the players that filled in roles from the practice roster yeah. a year ago. And there's a feet first slide as Pierce hits the deck in a hurry with John Bowman sizing him up. Of about three for Pierce. Decision there for Buck Pierce to get down in a hurry. We saw it a little bit earlier as he started to take off upfield a little bit. He got down, protected himself. Buck Pierce has to recognize that changing his style is important to the success of this team. He's got to do his part to keep himself healthy. It can't be all on the blocking scheme and the guys around him. First run by Pierce on the night. Second and seven. Flush from the pocket. He's got Matthews, and Chris Matthews, a little tightrope, stays in and gets some yards after the catch before he's dropped at the 36. But Pierce showing some great improvisational skills here. In the second half, making plays on the run. Chris Matthews starts off working in that backfield. He's eventually going to come all the way across the field on this play. Completely lost in coverage as he goes through traffic. Again, after a big play, they go with a, a hurry-up concept, no huddle. Pierce getting Simpson in the right spot after the 25-yard gain by Matthews, and look out, 
Chip Cox off the edge, buries Buck Pierce. Well, Chip Cox, least likely guy among the linebackers to come on any sort of a blitz, but he's coming on this one all the way. See that all up look, seven guys lined up across the line of scrimmage. They're all coming. You only got six blockers. Awareness from Buck Pierce. Buck's the guy setting the blocking scheme, so he knows he's putting Chad Simpson on Kai Grisebear, who's coming from the other side of that formation. He knows, though, that if Cox comes, he's free on the other side. Now they go two back on second and 15. Here comes the heat again. Pierce escapes initially, and now is brought down by the newcomer, Aaron Lavaris, dropping Pierce as the Alouettes turn up the heat that time on the protection emphasizing Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Yeah, and it's, again, the kind of thing the Bombers need to get to the sidelines, look at the board and straighten things out. Far too much pressure. Buck Pierce was able to make some positive plays in facing that, but you can't have that kind of pressure on every single play of a, of a drive. So Pilardi sent on to try a 48-yarder. His longest last season was 46. He's made from 35 and 23 on the night. And Justin Pilardi puts it up. And through. A 48-yarder for Pilardi. And it's a nine-point. Bomber lead. We'll see TV's new Monday night comedy, Satisfaction. With a new episode, special guest star Wendell Clark, Monday at 8, 7 Central on CTV. Wendell Clark's on, I'm watching. Hope he doesn't drop the gloves. <laughs> Well, a 19-point swing here in this third quarter. Galvillo up and he has Arlen Bruce with a catch, short yardage, as Bruce will be marked down at the 39-yard line. Gain of four to maybe five, depending on the exact spot. Chris, I never imagined midway through the first quarter of this football game that we'd be talking about the Montreal Alouettes need to bounce back in this ball game. Off to a tremendous start. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers have roared back. 21, 20 to 1 swing here in this third quarter in favor of Winnipeg. Galvillo, Richardson, a little push off to get room, but the pass over his head as he worked against Alex Suber. Flag on the field back at the line of scrimmage. Illegal contact on the receiver. Winnipeg, number seven. 10-yard penalty, first down. That's Devon Washington, and that will keep the Alouette offense on the field. Devon Washington covering the inside receiver on this play. See, he has to grab to stay alive as S.J. Green got underneath him on that contact. So it's a first down, Alouettes at their 50. It's screen, Delorier cuts back, tripped up, Alex Suber. And Suber gets into the face of Varla Bruce, who was unable to block the defensive halfback. Well, uh, you think back to Alex Suber's first year in the CFL back in 2010. It was a game against the Hamilton Tiger Cats, where he's matched up against Arlen Bruce. It was kind of his, his coming out party. Basically turned in a very strong performance against one of the best receivers in the league. A few big plays in that ball game, and that was kind of what put Alex Suber on the CFL radar. I did a double take. Suber without an interception all of last year. There's a pass and knocked down. There's Dunn intended for Bruce. But DJ Dunn with another defensive play. And that's the end of the third quarter. A big one for the home side. 19 points swing in that third quarter. Big numbers for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Yeah, absolutely. The big number, bottom right of your screen. 148 passing yards for Buck Pierce in that third quarter. 
huge in terms of regaining the momentum and obviously taking the lead in this ballgame. And Damon Washington with the punt return that's the biggest play other than the edge and 66 yarder. Did uh, you see any adjustments though that made Winnipeg have that much success against the Alouettes? Well, the, the, the biggest thing for Winnipeg is that Buck Pierce is throwing the ball with confidence. He's getting, he was getting time when they were moving the right. football. Obviously, Montreal seemed to adjust a little bit as that quarter went on and deciding we need to get to Buck Pierce. We can't give him time to make those plays. Seem to have some issues planting late in the first half, but came out firing and moving the football in the third quarter. But on that last series, the Alouette's defense got to the quarterback, and now they are on offense. Putting the football away to start this fourth quarter. Javon Johnson run out along the sidelines, and Winnipeg will start inside their 15. Winnipeg Blue Bombers opened it up in that third quarter. Big bomb. On the outside, Buck Pierce to Jade Etienne. Etienne did a nice job setting the table for a Clarence Denmark touchdown on the quick slant. Bombers immediately answer the next time they touch the ball. Damon Washington with a punt return for a major to give his team the lead. Two touchdowns in a 95-second span. And Justin Pilardi with a big 48-yard field goal. Here's Simpson <laughs> running up to the 16-yard line for Chad Simpson. Hasn't been able to be sprung on the ground much tonight. There you see Buck Pierce in that third quarter, the way he grabbed momentum. They opened things up a little bit, obviously a little bit conservative in terms of their approach. In the first 30 minutes of this ball game, we saw a lot of seven-man protections and so on, but they opened it up, spread things out, get that big play to Etienne and loosen up the defense. Two interceptions in the first half, including one on the first play from scrimmage. Second and seven, and looking for Edwards, but that sailed high and incomplete, so the Alouettes get a two and out that they're looking for and should get good field position for their first offensive possession of the fourth quarter. Uh, we had expressed our concern in that last series about the amount of pressure Buck Pierce was facing. And here's exactly why Adriel Kowali comes free on the loop inside on this one. He sticks his helmet right in the chest of the Bomber quarterback. And Kowali knocked Buck Pierce out of a game in 2011 with a hit that drew a suspension. What a monster great cup game he had for the Toronto Argonauts. Carrier awaits a line drive boot by Renault that rolls across midfield and finally picked up, but no yards will be called as Carrier gets taken down by Pierre-Luc LeBay after a 40-yard punt. We well, Andrew Kowali and Buck Pierce, they're, they're no strangers on the football field. You saw them meet moments ago. Look back a couple years. Edger Kowali took Buck Pierce out of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers lineup with this in Rogers Center in Toronto. Deep the late hit by the Canadian Football League. Let's go, on. Five yard, no yards penalty against Brandon Stewart. Puts the ball across midfield and Calvillo unable to make the connection with SG Green down at the 30. It'll be second and 10. And this is the kind of play that Dan Hawkins talked about at halftime. The Montreal Alouettes are just a little bit off. They're just missing by a bit on offense in this ball game. They need to clean it up. Things need to be a little bit tighter. Everybody needs to get on the same page a little bit more in order for them to be successful. These two teams will meet again next week. Bombers have five back-to-back -back sessions this year. Tied with Hamilton for the league most in that department. Second and ten. Tried to dump it off to Darren Diedrich, and it falls incomplete. And Calvillo shows a little frustration heading off. This isn't the way things usually go for the Montreal Alouettes. They're used to things running at peak efficiency. It was five years of fine-tuning under Mark Tressman, and now they're back at the start. 
learning as they go under new head coach Dan Hawkins and offensive coordinator Mike Miller. Javon Johnson awaits at the 10. But angling to the sidelines and Sean White hits the corner. What a terrific punt. And they'll mark him out at about the two yard line. White into the corner for 51.